All right, let's made in this thing. I'm actually here for the second time. Yesterday I came to enjoy the maiden flight and I forgot the goggles. So here we are. It looks like it's beautiful and sunny, which it is for about like five minutes. It's been raining the whole day, but let's see. Welcome back to the channel. We're finally going to finish our setup of the uh, FPV drone with the DJI HD system. Uh, we're going to uh, make it all work. Activate the, the DJI system, uh, update its firmware. It takes a long while, but you know, it has to be done. But mainly, we're going to be updating the firmware on the ESCs to be able to do the nice RPM telemetry between the flight controller and the ESCs and we're going to flash the latest beta flight firmware on the flight controller. Before you can use the device uh, and the device being either the goggles or any of the air units that you buy, every new device needs to be activated. I'm not exactly sure why you're activating them, uh, probably just to associate the device with your account or something nasty like that. Uh, once you activate it, uh, you will be <clears throat> prompted to update the firmware if there's a new firmware. And the devices come with some like pre-release firmware, so even though the release number is 1.0, you still need to activate it yourself. And in the classic DJI uh, style, you will waste quite a bit of the battery because it takes quite a while to download and flash the devices. But, um, you know, other than the process taking a bit, uh, it's pretty seamless. We will now proceed with configuration of the flight controller and the ESCs. Disconnect the battery to save it and just connect the micro USB uh, connector to the flight controller. Uh, we will use the Betaflight Configurator software to uh, pull the images of the flight controller uh, from the net, uh, from the internet, and uh, flash it first and then we'll configure it. Um, you will see me uh, connecting to uh, the board here, first to see that there's some ancient version of Betaflight flashed on it already, but also to learn what kind of board it is. This is the Lux 4 target so uh, you know Betaflight flight works on so many flight controllers so you need to find the image that will uh, that will be for you for the latest and greatest better flight one four uh, I mean four one uh, you see me still using release candidate the the final version has been already released so you can use just the releases you pick the Lux 4 OSD target and it will download uh, after you click the load firmware online button and then you can flash it you will see that uh, the board goes into the uh, dfu mode and then uh, it's going to erase everything that's in there because you checked erase everything and it's going to flash the latest and greatest so at this point we have the unconfigured image of the flight controller in there but before we dive into configuration we will do the same with the speed controller with the ESC we don't have to disconnect and connect to something else because we can flash and configure things through the flight controller uh, which to you it doesn't sound very um, sophisticated but remember uh, this is uh, you know 
uh, RC enthusiast stuff. So this is actually quite sophisticated for us. Anyway, let's move on. We will need a different tool. I will link all of these configuration tools down in the description. So let's just uh, let's just move into uh, grabbing or uh, using the downloaded software, which is called uh, BL Heli 32 Configurator. Device names change from operating system to operating system. I'm using macOS here, so. Uh, you select the device that you just connected and uh, you check that all the ESCs are communicating and you can flash them by pushing the flash BL heli button. It's gonna automatically detect what kind of uh, speed controller it is and pull the appropriate version. You wanna have the 32.7 and up to get the uh, RPM uh, bi-directional uh, telemetry. Um, the process again is quite tedious but uh, you have to go through it. Once all the four ESCs are flashed with the main battery still attached you can now go to the motors tab where uh, you will be able to spin individual motors or all of the motors and check that they're spinning and then they're spinning in the right direction. At this point, we'll just check that they're spinning at all. A little pause here. Uh, we have to talk about safety. And I'm not talking about like, oh, drones are dangerous. They're killing people. Uh, I'm talking about propellers and batteries. Well, batteries is a different thing we can talk about in the future. But propellers, when we're configuring things like the speed controllers, we have to have a battery attached. And when you have the battery attached, plus you attach to the USB, that is a moment where the props should not be there. Why? Well, you have your face like half a meter away from these props and it's software. Any moment you can hit a button that you didn't mean to or there's just you know, a software glitch. Uh, if you're dealing with the bootloader, like on the KISS ESCs, uh, with the power being on, those guys spin and, uh, you know, spin up <laughs> very frequently. And you don't want something that can go, you know, 100 kilometers an hour within a second to be right up your face. I mean, if, if you uh, if you have a good stomach, you can just Google and look for those uh, images. It has happened and people have had their faces chopped up by propellers and those are not pretty images. Don't do it. Every time you attach a battery and you're configuring the flight controller through USB, you should have the propellers off. Warning over. First thing we need to do is to tell the flight controller that we have mounted it uh, sideways, that we turned it uh, counterclockwise. Uh, you will see me <laughs> telling, uh, putting the wrong configuration first, but the way you tell it's correct is that in the setup tab, you see uh, the virtual representation of the quad as you're turning it. So uh, you set the yaw, uh, axes to be minus 90 degrees or 270 degrees um, because we mounted it counterclockwise and then you save and try again and the the virtual quad should move correctly as you're uh, tilting the quad okay so now we told the flight controller that it's angled but it's only for the sensors the other thing that we have done by rotating it is uh, we've moved the motors. By default, the better flight software, you know, to be able to, like any, any multi-copter software, to be able to rotate in the yaw axis, it needs to like spin up these guys and slow down these guys to be moving that direction and vice versa or the other way. I don't want to <laughs> figure it out right now. Uh, but the motors are spinning opposite direction. Uh, you know, these guys are clockwise, these guys are counterclockwise. Um, but we've moved it and, you know, each motor is different. 
Butterfly counts it as this is the first one, second, third, fourth. And now I've rotated it. So we need to remap it so that Butterfly still thinks that this is the first one and this is the second one, third and fourth. Let's see how that's done. When dealing with motor configuration, of course you need to attach a battery. And again, when you attach a battery, you should not have propellers on. Uh, once you enable the uh, button to override the, the safety uh, and you can spin up the motors, I usually like to open up a text document to see what kind of motors are spinning as I'm moving the appropriate slider. So I can later do an easy uh, remapping of the resources in better flight. So uh, motor one is actually moving motor two. Um, and again, I'm referring to the numbers. You can see them on the left, top left uh, in the butterfly configurator. So you see what motors should have what corresponding number. And uh, I just mark down the mapping at the first stage. I'm kind of sorry that I have to drag you into the command line in the butterfly configuration and like resource remapping is really not something you should be dealing with but sadly this board has the USB connector on the wrong side so we have we had to turn it around and do this thing so uh, please bear with me this is not something that you normally would do but we have to dive into the command line interface and configure the mapping so if you type resource, it will show you like all the addresses of the chip that you can remap things to. And this is the, the section that's, that's uh, interesting to us, which is what, what pins are mapped to the uh, motors. Now, hopefully I won't forget to put this magic snippet of a remapping code into the description and you can just take it and paste it and it's gonna work but I would like you to like understand what was happening here so what I'm doing is I'm going from the right hand side which is the the, the target uh, motor situation and I'm reading what motor resource it has in the original file so for the motor one uh, I see that it has motor three so I'm copying the code uh, from motor three on the original one and putting it as motor one. On the motor two, we'll take the one that's on motor one and paste it on the second line and do that for all four motors. And we have successfully remapped the resources to our new oriented board. Now we take all of those and copy and paste it into the command line and then type save and enter. This should uh, be all you need to do to remap the motors to the new state. Okay, so now we've successfully uh, remapped, reoriented the board and remapped all the motors to be the right uh, sequence so this is number one it's number two number three number four what we don't have is them or maybe we do but you will be very lucky uh, we don't yet know uh, the correct uh, direction that the motors are spinning they can spin that way or that way that's uh, depending on how the phase wires are soldered so it can either go that way or the other way um, the ESC actually is able to be able to recover the quad when it's upside down to spin it the other way But you have to have a default direction that is correct and you can do that both by uh, resoldering the any two wires so that it spins the other direction or you can use the software to reconfigure it Which is what we're gonna be doing. So the first thing we have the battery attached and we go to the motors tab again to test for the direction. So what you do is you uh, move the slider slightly and then just slightly touch the motor. This one is very, uh, you know, there's no 
um, hard surfaces on it so you can't really uh, damage yourself some people put like a little tape to figure out which direction uh, just touch it slightly you will tell uh, which direction it's spinning so what you do is you mark whether the uh, direction is correct you can again check the little uh, graphic on the top left to see which direction it should be spinning number one should be clockwise number two should be counterclockwise three should be counterclockwise and four should be clockwise uh, if it's not mark which motor is spinning the wrong direction and we will fix it in the second step go back to the bl heli suite to configure the escs but this time we're uh, going to uh, not flash anything we're just going to change some of the settings of the uh, of the ESCs. We are gonna check that everything reads correctly and we're gonna enable just the first one. In my case I have to switch the first, second and third. Uh, so I select the direction to be reverse um, for all of them and write the configuration back. Uh, you can possibly do it for three ESCs at the same time, but I, I'm just used to doing it one by one, just making sure that it only does uh, what I tell it to. So once you go through all of them, you can check the direction either back in the uh, better flight configurator or you can do it directly in the, the BL Heli Suite tool. It does exactly the same and it works pretty much the same. At this point, I probably lost most of people that like haven't done any FPV before. Uh, however, for the 0.1% of you still sticking around, we're still not done. We just configured the motors on our flight controller and the ESCs. What's coming up next is um, the receiver which either is going to be the onboard receiver in the air unit for most of you or in my case the crossfire and then it's pretty much done because everything else is done on the air unit itself so just making sure that we have the correct UART set for both the receiver and the uh, the OSD and all the, the configuration that's that's uh, for the air unit that's just one serial port uh, and we're gonna get get through it but please if you're still around and you've watched this super long dull video and want to know more please let me know because I ran out of energy at this point so you really need to convince me that I that you want another episode of this configuration otherwise we're go we're gonna go back to the usual program which is me flying some interesting spots and putting some nice music to it. So uh, thanks for sticking around and I hope I'm actually talking to somebody and not just myself at this point. Take care guys. Jak jakože, já umím pavlu. No, a v polovině, když jsi nahoře a koukáš jakoby trošku dolů, pod 30 no. stupněma, tak se otočíš jo, jako na... Do 180. No, 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 no. A pak můžeš pokračovat, ale to je fakt jako, musíš ho hodně zatáhnout, ještě, 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 to je moc brzo, to nedotočíš ten pavlu. Musíš ho hodně, to hodně tlačit, to je Tak co? Je to fakt hustý. Ne, nemám tady obtisky. <laughs> trošku, trošku si šlo obtiskne. Ale fakt je to hustý. Je to fakt dobrý. No, škoda, A já nevím... nebo možná dobře, že jsem nevzal ty tvoje brýle. Teď kdyby si zdal analog, tak bys to trošku měl. Jaký to je rozdíl. Musím ti říct, že jako bych řekl, že ne, že ten digitál je o tolik lepší než analog. Ale analog je o strašně moc horší než ten digitál.